Right, so hello. We are with our muzzle training webinar now. I am Jo Natkins. If you haven't seen me or worked with me before, um, I run dog training for Essex and Suffolk, um, which is uh, in person on the uh, Essex and Suffolk border as well as online. And I have been running dog training for Essex and Suffolk since 2014. And I have been... Um, uh, done almost uh, started all my certificates in dog training and behavior um back in well i passed those uh 2004 2005 something along those lines and i've been a kennel club accredited um, dog trainer since 2015 and a certified professional canine fitness trainer since 2014 um tonight's webinar is going to be presented not only by me but also by my dogs i have my norwich terriers merlin and ripley and on the floor distracting me as we speak is my new rescue puppy um pepper so hello so Merlin and Ripley have done some mother training before Pepper has done none so when we come onto that part um, it will be completely brand new for her which obviously gives you the best uh, idea of how it looks so um I have got a presentation for you I haven't done this before I haven't shared a screen uh, and shared items so um oh there it is so I'm hoping <laughs> that it does something that it's supposed to do um i have no idea now what people can see and what they can't see um is there a way of finding out i don't know no there's no there's no way i assume that you can see what i can see we'll find out won't we i guess at some point um so getting started then mighty muzzles i've decided to call this um so muzzle training you probably have seen lots of things lately in the press about certain dog breeds and the fact that some dog breeds will be um, becoming exempt at some point towards the end of the year. And of course, we already have dogs that are exempt and banned in this country. And one of the um, stipulations of owning a breed that is exempt or owning a breed that has been considered to be a banned breed um oh, that's a completely different um whole webinar there on its own um do what, you have to register them and part of it is that they have to be muzzled whenever they are out of your house so if you are taking your dog somewhere in the car they have to be muzzled if you take them to the vet they have to be muzzled if you go to training classes although if it's a banned breed most dog trainers aren't insured to train them in the first place it's a bit of a you know, catch 22 um but yes anywhere they go uh there's out of your home basically uh, they have to be muzzled as well as obviously leads and bits and pieces so that's something that might be uh it was something that you may well be aware of having seen recently more recent than not um but muzzles have been about for many 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 years are you coming up ripley and you know they've been used for lots of different things and so that's what i wanted to talk to you about so let's go on to the next one so what is a muzzle what am i talking about when i ask you what is a muzzle um obviously a muzzle is part of the dog's face so we've got we've got ripley here technically speaking this part here is the muzzle of a dog but we are obviously talking about a physical um item that goes across that part of the dog's face so this is where we start looking at what a muzzle actually is, because there are lots of things and it might not always be obvious. So a muzzle is a training aid. It can be a daily help. Um, it can prevent biting and it can allow us to control a dog's mouth. And I'll come into more details on these later. It's not anything, honestly. So here is an example of a mu my muzzles are tiny because my dogs are small of a muzzle. And here is an example of another muzzle. There are many muzzles about and you can, in fact, make muzzles as well, if you need to in an emergency. Um, so what are muzzles used for? Now, muzzles can be used for all of these things. Preventing dogs snuffling things off the ground during walks. To prevent a dog from biting during vet screaming procedures. Used during an emergency when a dog may be scared. To protect a dog with a known bite history. And to protect a dog with a known history, unknown history, full stop. 
need to add a, an arm into there. Um, so let's just do that. And it's done. Um, brilliant. Um, so what? let's go through those. So preventing dogs snuffling things off the ground. Now, there are dogs, I know dogs personally, that have got um, all sorts of issues, health issues from um, gallbladder issues to pancreatitis issues to IBD, um, irritable bowel disease, as well as other things like diabetes, uh, etc. And the worst possible thing that could happen for one of these types of dogs is that they eat something that they shouldn't be able to eat, basically. That they uh, manage to go out, you right, Merlin, and snuffle something off the floor while they're out and about, and the owner hasn't either hasn't seen it, or they tr- haven't quite managed to move them in time, or they're distracted, they're picking up poo, and the dog's managed to find something at the same time, and the dog manages to get it into their system, and then you've got a dog having an allergic reaction, a dog having, um, uh, you know, a, a spike of some sort where they, you know, they really shouldn't have that in their body. It can lead to being um, hospitalised, needing surgery, all sorts of things. It might be something really harmless to majority of dogs, but to that dog, it causes problems. It might be they've eaten, they've got a history of, of snuffling things that they shouldn't have that isn't even food. So it might be that when you take your dog around to visit a certain household, um, there's going to be dog toys about or they're going to get themselves into the laundry basket and digest socks and then they have to have surgery to have them removed those sorts of things so pop a muzzle onto your dog when you're taking them somewhere where they may get hold of something and potentially you can save your dog's life you can save them being in the vets for however many times and obviously save you from paying a huge amount of money in vet bills hey pepper um what are we doing it's a it's a muzzle there you go Good. Um, so to prevent a dog from biting during vets, grooming and procedures. So if you have a dog that is fearful at the vets or a dog that really, really, really um, doesn't like to be handled by people um, or just gets very tense at the vets because maybe they've had lots of things done at some point. I'm not sure what you're doing, darling. What are you doing? Hmm? You silly. Um, then. If they go in and the vet really needs to have a look at them, take their temperature um, or needs to, you know, really get in there and they've got a really bad ear infection or um, whatever it might be. If you've got a dog that is really not happy about being there, it's actually commonplace for a vet to say, right, well, I can't see your dog unless we put a muzzle on them because I can't risk me being bitten or my my vet techs, etc., my team being bitten. Um, so we're gonna have to put muzzle on or we cannot examine your dog or do whatever it is they need to get done. Now, if your dog is already stressed because they're in the vets, because they've got someone looking at them, if they've never been muzzle trained and all of a sudden this gets put on them, it's gonna stress them out even more. Okay. So if you know your dog isn't keen on something like that, going to the groomers, going to the vets, whatever it might be, um, introducing them beforehand to muzzle training so that they, you know, they know what's coming uh, and 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 they can realize that it's not actually a bad thing um c- takes away part of that stress okay one section of stress has now gone um so that can be something that can be really handy to to have um use during an emergency when a dog may be scared so to give you an example here what you got pepper um i had one of my dogs cassie my first norwich terrier um had epilepsy um, or a version of epilepsy diagnosed when she was two and she lived as she was 16 and a half so something i did with her when she was very young was to muzzle train her and the reason being and it is recommended you know in a lot of places if someone has got a dog with epilepsy um and other medical conditions would come under this as well that if you muzzle train your dog, it means if they do then need to have something done in an emergency procedure. So, for example, if Cassie had gone into having cluster seizures, seizure after seizure, and then needed to go um, to the vet to help her out of that, she's going to be scared. She's going to be confused, disoriented, all of that all at once anyway. The last thing that she would have needed is then suddenly this gets put on her and she doesn't know what it is. And her stress levels go even higher and that continues to make the seizures happen. So again, if I took a muzzle out, she would go, yes, the muzzle's come out. We get treats for this. It's brilliant. I love a muzzle. So it's one less thing for her to be completely stressed about and help the vet do what they need to get done 
They're not trying to get a dog that's thrashing about because they don't know what it is. It's something that's actually familiar. It can help some dogs feel a little bit calmer if they are muzzle trained because it's something that they know what's coming and, and what's happening. Um, so but to protect a dog with a known bite history. And again, I've worked with dogs who have got a known bite history. They are rescue dogs. They are dogs that have lived on the streets. They are dogs that have been in homes, but um, for whatever reason have bitten and been rehomed. Um, if they've got a known bite history, rescues generally will, um, part of the contract of you taking that dog on will be that that dog is only muzzled when they go out in public. OK, and that's for everyone's safety. Obviously, it's to prevent your dog being able to bite someone else or another dog. So you're protecting other people, other dogs. You're protecting yourself because they can't transfer onto you. But you are also and it's important to remember this. You are also protecting your own dog. OK, so what I mean by that is if they're wearing a muzzle because you're not sure if they might bite or not, they now cannot bite because you've put the muzzle on them. They can't bite, which means you have now protected your dog. Nothing can happen. They can't bite someone else. Therefore, they that you're not going to get taken to court for anything and your dog's not going to get taken away, etc., etc., because you've you've protected them. OK, so with a dog who has got a bite history of some sort, if it's your own dog, then it might be worth mother draining so that if anyone comes to visit or you take your dog somewhere else, you know they know what's coming and it's fine it's all nice and calm um or if you don't know what their history is and you need to take them somewhere you've got this in place ready um and again like i say i've I've worked with dogs in in classes i've worked with a one to one fantastic dogs and i've never once felt threatened with them at all um but their owner religiously for years and years and years and years and years after rescuing them and adopting them used a muzzle because that was the agreement and it meant that they knew their dog couldn't do anything. Therefore, they were protecting their dog. So, big one, really. Um, I don't know what's happening down there with the puppy. Um, to protect a dog with an unknown history, full stop. So, again, you know, you take on a dog that is a rescue dog, is a rehome from someone that you kind of know, a friend of a friend, um, is a dog that um, you inherit, perhaps, and you don't know what their history is. Have they ever bitten a person, another dog, another animal? Um, we don't know. So having the muzzle training can be something that is useful to have. And um, I, I know people who are incredibly responsible with their dog. They don't actually have a history of biting, but they don't know their full history. So they've got the muzzle trained and they take the muzzle out and it's just in their bag or attached to their bag so that if they're out and a dog comes herring over or dogs won't leave them alone, they keep pestering them or they need to go in somewhere um, and they're not too sure how the dog's going to react. Maybe an emergency comes up, they need to get them into the vet or when they're out, they need to go and pick up the dog from the school, something like the dog, no, children from the school. Muzzle trained dog, pop the muzzle on. Again, nothing can take you by surprise. They cannot do something because they've now got the muzzle on, but they're calm because you've muzzle trained them. So they just carry on as normal, but you know that that dog cannot now bite anyone or anything. So it's for the unknown as well as the known that muzzle training is, is a good one to have. Um, so um, I I don't know where we're at. I can't tell which pa oh they're five um so are all muzzles the same now you've got two that are here so straight away we know that the answer is no there are many styles of muzzle now when I uh Pepper thank you when I first muzzle trained Cassie there were only two types of muzzle available one is a Baskerville or basket style and the other was the the Mickey style soft muzzle other types of muzzle are available at the time. This was the main one and the Baskerville. Um, there are now many more styles of muzzle. Sorry, Pepper's now going to play with the toy. Your timing, dog, is amazing. You've been asleep this whole time. She's having a great time. I may I may just spin it around. She can, you can watch her while I'm talking. So there are many styles of muzzle. So oh, press the button, Joe. Press the button. There we go. So here are a few styles of muzzle. <laughs> Pepper, what are you doing? I'll play with this. 
can play with a muzzle. You can play with a muzzle. So you can see here, we've got seven different styles of muzzle here. We've got um, a pretty material canvassy one. We've got um, a couple of mesh ones in the middle there. The left-hand mesh one with the Labrador um, is mesh, but just with a camo pattern. And the other one is completely mesh. We have got a, it is a muzzle. It's, it's sold as a muzzle. Um, it looks a little bit like a head collar. We've got another head collar in blue. We've got the same version of this, but in a different colour. Um, and then we have a, a traditional style um, basket type muzzle. Um, and this is just a few. These are just kind of the main ones that come up when you do a search for muzzles. Hey, um, and this is what you'll find. Um, so there are lots of different style of muzzle. We're going to go into the different styles um, quite, you know, before long. Now we're looking at all the different kinds of muzzles. This style, number six, is the one that probably looks the least, uh, six and seven, sorry, are the ones that probably look the least appealing as a pet dog owner. They're the ones that we kind of think, oh, I don't want that on my dog. Now, I purposely, <laughs> can you see her? I purposely got a black muzzle for this, uh, as you saw me taking the tags off earlier, um, because my dogs are red. I wanted something that you could actually see against them because I've got muzzles that are the same colour as them, like, um, like in the picture there, number six, um, and you can't really see it on them, which is the whole point. You can get muzzles that are pretty materials, like number one in the picture here and number five. You can get them in neutral colours. So like in number six there, you can get those sorts of colours so that they blend in better with your dog. You can get ones that are made to measure and you can have all sorts of bright and wonderful colours on. You can have them um, patterned. Oh, I can't believe I didn't add this. You can get one that looks like a um, duck beak. You know, there are so many different types of muzzle nowadays. However, they still have a lot of stigma about them and that's why I'm doing this talk. Um, so... All these different muzzle styles that are here. Now we've got soft muzzle. So that is similar to what Pepper is trying to eat at the minute. Can I have that for a second? Ta. Pepper pots. So soft muzzle looks like this. Okay, you can have it back now. There you go. Which is uh, the first and second pictures here. Uh, we've got a head collar style. I've labelled that. I'm not really sure what that's called as such. Um, but you can see in the the, the fourth picture there, um, I don't know, can I, this one here, if you can see the cursor, um, you can see here that the dog's mouth is sort of pinched shut a tiny bit. So, um, hey, Ripper Chopper. So it's, it's, it's tight here, which means that if your dog wanted to open their mouth, they'd find it much more difficult to do so. So, um, so that's where kind of the pressure point goes on on there. So it's very, very short compared to the muzzles next to them, um, but it does kind of stop the mouth opening to its fullest amount. Then we've got the basket muzzles, which we've already mentioned and is what we've got here. So that is a basket style muzzle. So you've got lots of holes and things and they're generally made out of um, plastic like this one. And um, this is very soft. Um, some are made of metal and some are made of biothane and things like that now. Um, ones that are similar to this would also be a greyhound style muzzle. And a greyhound muzzle tends to come kind of round here and down a bit more. If you think of the shape of a greyhound with a long, thin nose. So the muzzle would come out here, but it goes right here. So there's enough room for that mouth to open. And then we've got the mesh muzzles there as well. And they are both the same. So the, the let me get the pointy going, this one and this one are both mesh. You can see the mesh in the front here on this one and some mesh on this one here. Um, so that is a similar look to the Baskerville style, but it's softer. OK, so it's a, it's a little bit more uh, maybe nice to look at and it's a little bit softer for the dog to lay down in, things like that. Ooh, where it is. So what's the difference? So let's have a look at the different styles. Now, muzzles with a basket style are deemed the most secure as well as being the most comfortable. And I'll explain the comfort thing in a moment. So if you were to rehome a dog from a rescue place, um, especially one of the bigger ones, they will say, and it, they, you know, and they have got a bite history of any sort or an unknown history, then they will say, you know, we, you will need a muzzle um, and we need you to buy a basket or a Baskerville style muzzle. It must be one of these styles. These are the ones that are deemed the safest, the least easy for dogs to scrape off their own noses. 
it's one that is going to be the most difficult for dogs to actually break through or bite through it. So dogs cannot bite unless something enters the basket. So unless someone puts a finger, you know, in one of these little areas here, which they really shouldn't be doing, your dog's mouth can't get out to do any biting. It Once it's in, it's in. OK, <laughs> you're wearing your muzzle. Well, you're a funny little dog. <laughs> She's playing with the muzzle. She's put it on herself. That's one way of muzzle training. It's a good girly. You strange thing. Um, there is ample panting room when fitted correctly. OK, now this is quite small. I've only got little dogs and I brought this specifically for showing you how to muzzle train. You dropped it. You dropped it. Um, now you can see in the picture here with Goldie um, that his mouth is open a bit and the tongue is sticking out. He is able to pant. Realistically, I would want this to be just a tiny bit bigger around here so that he can pant properly. Um, but at least some panting is able to happen here. When dogs can't pant, they can dehydrate and overheat and that can cause obviously lots of different issues. Um, dogs can drink <laughs> while wearing a basket style muzzle. They can, they literally, as long as the, you've got a deep enough water bowl, they can push their head in. So the whole basket is <laughs> submerged. And while that happens, they can just drink basically, as long as you, you know, you've got a good size one. Um, and dogs can receive treats. And again, I've had dogs in classes and one to one that I've worked with and I have treated them. So this particular one isn't ideal. I could, I could push a tiny thin piece of treat in there, a wafer thin treat. Um, but chances are what I would actually do is try and poke it through the side here like that so that my dog can take it. Or if I was using this as a training tool, I might even just cut a piece away just so that I can treat my dog while they're wearing it. Um, but what you tend to get, you can see on the dog here that there's lots of space at the front to put a treat in. That wouldn't be a problem there at all. And a lot of the proper Baskerville style muzzles actually have the muzzle itself and then slightly further in is a little section that can be taken out. Um, and if you take that out, your dog can't reach any further in, but there is then the easier way of giving your dog good pair um, a treat. So that's something to look at as well is to make sure that you you personally can get the treat to go in. So really, I would want this type of bit here so that my dog can take the treat from the side um so yeah so that's the main difference that's what a baskerville muzzle does and looks like so muzzles with mesh the mess muzzle mesh muzzle um can be a good alternative now particularly good for using while you're training your dog because it is soft because it is lightweight um, it can be a good one to start training with particularly while you're still trying to work out what size to get or if you're muzzle training your puppy and you don't want to get them their full size muzzle just yet it can be something to start the training process with if you're a lunatic dog um, the, the mesh i don't even know where the muzzle's gone now the mesh can provide lots of room for panting so again you can see in this um picture that the little dog here is panting in the picture um, so, you know, because you can get, you know, as much space as you want, pretty much in, in the mesh there. Um, dogs can drink while wearing. Again, if you make sure it's a deep enough bowl, enough water in, they can push their noses in and drink while they are wearing it. Now, the downside is that dogs cannot receive a treat while wearing unless you've got the smallest treats in the world and you can accurately push them through. You can't treat your dog while wearing a mesh muzzle, unfortunately, which means the muzzle has to come off to treat them not the end of the world but if the muzzle is on because you don't want to risk any biting then you do not want to risk taking that muzzle off when you're out and about um it can look more appealing to dog owners so certainly the the, the mesh there looks less harsh than uh, the basket version um from back here it looks a little bit soft and a little bit nicer um so you know pros and cons um, right, so we've got there the uh, this these are labelled as muzzles. Genuinely, um, I took this picture from a well-known online uh, shop that sells many things, including muzzles. And this came up when I wrote in muzzle, and in the description, when you actually go into information, it says it is a muzzle. It stops dog biting. Blah blah blah. Um, technically, I personally would call this a uh, a head collar. Um, because it's just going around the nose and the head. It's not stopping the dog from biting, in my opinion. Uh, let's go into there. Um, it does hold the mouth shut a bit because it's tight. Um, 
but dogs have got a lot of mouth. Now you can see here, uh, the Dobie here is actually not only is he panting, he's holding a tennis ball in his mouth. Now, if your dog can get a tennis ball in their mouth and you can hand it to them while they're wearing the muzzle, thank you, Merlin, then that is not a muzzle. Or if it is a muzzle, it's not very effective as a muzzle because if you're giving your dog, shut up, Merlin, if you're giving your dog a muzzle or giving them to wear a muzzle because you don't want them to eat things off the floor and they can pick up, they can eat from a bowl like this dog is or they can pick up a tennis ball, Merlin, it's fine, it's just the telly. Um, then that's not going to stop them snuffling something when they're out and about, really. So it's, it's probably not going to help hugely. Um, it will not prevent a dog from biting either. If they can open their mouth this much to get a tennis ball in, then they can get a finger in there. They could probably get a hand or an arm in there. Um, they could certainly, you know, especially with a little dog like Ripley, they could definitely get part of the face in there or a leg or an ear or something like that. So... Although it's labelled as a muzzle, if you're thinking, I just want to get a nice muzzle for my dog, so I know I've done it, I've done the training, and I can have it in my bag just in case, and you see this and you think, that's not what I expected from a muzzle. Oh my God, it's it's a pretty colour and it looks quite nice. Okay, excellent, I'm going to do that. If you're getting a muzzle to try and do something good for your dog, keep them safe for the future, this is not a muzzle and it is not going to help, unfortunately. It's very pretty and it will work to help control if your dog uh, pulls on lead but it isn't going to stop them from eating things off the floor or from biting, okay? Um, so, yes, that wouldn't be acceptable. If if you are someone who, have, who has adopted a dog um, from a, a bigger charity who has said you must use a muzzle, this would not be accepted as a muzzle, unfortunately. Um, so that you're aware of that. It's a very nice-looking piece of equipment, but it is not a muzzle. Um, and then we've got the soft muzzle. So the soft muzzle, um, this is often, I have one of these because I use this a lot when I'm teaching muzzle training to people, especially people who are quite against muzzle training because this does look so harsh, whereas this doesn't look so bad. So the soft muzzle literally is material, like you can see there. And so it goes onto the face like this. So the bigger part goes under the chin and the top part stops in front of the eyes and then does up around the head. Um, and there are loads of different styles, as we saw. Um, it looks cosy and less scary compared to the basket version. Unfortunately, when they are wearing one of these, they can still nip. Now, this is a size two and is actually too big for my dogs. I purposely got the bigger version because, like I said, I'm using, I use it for muzzle training. And I want to be able to show that my I can get the treat in for my dogs. So if it was the correct fit, then you can see from the picture here, the correct fit means <laughs> that my dog can get their nose through the end here. And if they can get the end through here, that means that they can nip. Yep, they can get that little bit of nip going. It means someone could try and give your dog something and they will be able to bite if needed. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, if you've brought the bigger size because you're trying to do it for training. Crazy dog. If you're trying to use it for training, so you brought the next size up, chances are what will happen is instead of this happening like this, actually you'll get even more of your dog's nose through and there'll be a big gap underneath here, which means they'll be able to open their mouth quite well and they will be able to take a, a much better bite. Um, when it's fitted correctly, dogs cannot drink out of one of these. The idea is they cannot open their mouth from the hinge, um, so they can nip the front teeth, but they can't actually open it enough to get a drink. Um, they cannot pant because the mouth is shut. There is no way for them to pant. They can stick the tongue out, and that's about it. Um, they can take a treat. So, like I say, I use these for muzzle training, and you know, if you've got a small piece and you put it in in a certain way, then your dog can. It needs to be quite small, but it is possible for dogs to be uh, trained while wearing one of these. However, dogs can still bite. And again, a lot of vets, or the same majority of vets, will, um, if you pull this out and say, oh, don't worry, I can muzzle, I can pop the muzzle, I've done the training, uh, just in case he bites, they'll say, actually, no, look, we've got these, we're going to put one of them on, um, because the dogs can still bite with these, bite and nip. So though, again, it looks better. Um, and it can be a way of introducing the muzzle to get them used to it. Um, it's not going to stop a dog that's nipping if that's the reason why you have a muzzle. 
So how do we muzzle drain? Um, so this lovely picture here is from um, Dion from Candy Dash Images provided this for me. Um, so we're going to keep the session short. We're going to have fun. We're going to reward every step. We're going to reward everything that our dog offers us, even no matter how small. And we're not going to rush forwards. OK, now I am going to just leave you in Ripley's capable pause for a moment. I stock up on some treats. And I'm going to show you a few different stages with each of the dogs. Otherwise, we'll have all sorts of issues, I suspect. So I'm going to show you. Hello, uh, Peppa. Right. No, can you get off? Go over there. Yay, Merlin, you come up. up, up. Oh, God, this is not going to work. Um, so, hello, Ripley. Hello, Merlin. So, first thing we're going to do, and this is going to look bonkers, we are going to take something that is not a muzzle. Okay, it's the very first step. We're going to introduce a new trick. Uh, we call this hide face. So, we want our dogs to stick their head inside. It can be a cone. It can be a piece of paper rolled up to make a cone. Um, you could start with something like a yogurt pot if you wanted to. So there's actually a pre-stage. Hello. Are you all starving, Ben Chance? Hello, Pepper. Um, and we're going to make this fun. So we start off with a training game, as it were. So Pepper hasn't done this before. The others have. So we'll start with Pepper so you get the idea. Um, well, actually, I'll show you with Ripley. So what we are going to want our dogs to be doing is... Hide your face. Yes. Good. OK, good girl. That is what we are looking for. Hide your face. Yes. Good girl. Nice. Merlin, hide your face. Good boy. Good boy. Right. Pepper, off. All right. Let's do this over here so we can see crazy puppy Pepper. So here's Pepper doing her first uh, live training. So I'm going to make a big, oh, I'm going to make a big deal about the cone. OK. Oh, Pepper. What's this? Oh, what's this in here? Wow. Pepper. Yes, good girl. That's nice. Oh, Pretty Pepper. Oh, look in there. Can you see? <laughs> good girl. Merlin, it's enough. I don't know what they thought they could hear. No one's coming through that door at the moment, trust me. So, as you can see, we keep it very small, especially while the dog's barking at nothing. Oh, pretty Pepper. Can you see? Oh, what's this? What's this? Ripley, shut up. You're the one starting it. No one cares. Oh, what's this? What's that? Yes, I've got it. Pepper. Pepper. <laughs> no, you did really well to start with, and then Ripley barked. Yes, good girl, good girl. Now, it's important to note, I'm not holding a treat in the sides for her to take. If this was a, a if this was a solid cone, I wouldn't be chucking a treat inside it. I want her to voluntarily put her face in, okay? So I might move it about, but I'm not putting it on her myself. I'm holding it still. I might move it side to side, but I'm not doing that with it because that's quite scary. I want her to put her own face inside it, okay? And as soon as she puts the face inside it, I'm saying yes and moving it out of the way and giving her a treat so that she can get the idea that this is a good thing. This is what we want, but it always needs to be her choice. <gasps> oh, what's this in here? Look, oh, wow. You see? Yes, good girl, Peppa. Oh, you're so clever. Oh, you're so clever. Literally, I promise you, she has never done this before. This is brand new for her. Good girl, isn't it? Well, as far as I know, she's a rescue. I don't know what she's learned. She's not learned it with me. Up here. Hey. Are you ready? Madden, shut up, please. Yes, good girl. Oh, no. Oh, what a clever girl. Oh, yeah, what a clever girl. Hold on, Merlin. Um, that's what you want to start with. Okay, is literally just taking something that your dog can easily put their nose in. It doesn't want to be too tiny. Hide your face. Good boy, Merlin. And Ripper Chopper. Hide your face. Yes. And oh, is this ready? Yes, good girl. There you go. Um, and make a big fuss of it. So look inside it. Oh, what's that? It's amazing. Oh. Show someone else if there's anyone else here. Oh, oh my god, 
It's so good. And then show your dog. And they will instinctively go, what's in there then? And we go, yay! And we give them a treat. Brilliant. If they are known for being a little bit unsure or they've previously had to wear a muzzle that was just chucked on them, um, then you might need to maybe get them to have a look and then put the treat inside as the reward so they can put their face back in. Um, or another step before that, like I say, is if you've just had a yogurt or something like that, um, or perhaps one of the, uh, excuse me, you're in my pocket, or perhaps one of the like little syrup sponges, something like that. Once you've eaten what you're having, let either give it a quick wipe round first if they're sensitive to foods, um, or, or just give it to them so that they get used to sticking their nose in um to to you know have a boot around really good excuse to get a mcflurry from mcdonald's because you can get your dog to stick the nose in after you've eaten it but something like that if they if you feel they need that extra um and so yeah so we go to the cone and we literally do what we've just done there with with pepper so you do a few hand handful of them and then we stop and then we go back to it later that day the next day whatever it might be and we're going to do the same thing again. I know you're so hungry, aren't you? Your poor dog. Um, and so then what we start to do, when we know that they're going to put their head in pretty easily, then we are going to start adding a word to it. Pepper. <laughs> Cheeky. Where's Pepper gone? Where is it? Yay! Clever girl. That's good. So she's not quite there yet. I want her to just put her face in, basically. Pepper. Okay, come in. Oh, cheating. Yes, good girl. I'm going to put it in that far. So then when I think she's ready, so you've got to imagine we're going ahead a little bit here. I'm going to put my word in. Face, yes, good girl. Oh, is there? Good girl. So I'm going to use face. It becomes hide face eventually. But I'm going to say it as she does the action. Pepper. Face, yes, good girl. Oh, what a clever girl. So now we're labelling it. So now we're letting her know that when you do this, it's called face. Hide whatever you want to use. OK, you can call it muzzle if you want, because that's where we're heading for. So then what we start asking for, and I'll turn this a bit so you can see Ripley this time, is we want them to want to put their face into the item, basically. So Ripley, hide face. Yes, good girl. So notice that Ripley keeps it in. Ripley, hide your face. Yes, good girl. Such a clever girly. Ripley, hide face. Yes, good girl. And so we're building it up. Okay, we're making it more interesting and more fun for them. Right, Merlin, can you go circle? Circle and hop. Where have you got? Not a goat around the table. Go hop. Hop. Come on. Yee. Not you. Over there. Merlin, come. Come. And so when your dog is then fine with that, then we move on to the muzzle. So it's up to you what muzzle you use. I used the soft one initially to give the idea of how it, hang on, of how it works. And all we're going to do, <laughs> if you're a maniac, is I'm going to hold my muzzle in my hand like this. I'm going to poke the treat from my end right in as far as I can possibly get it. Okay. And I'm going to let my dog come to the muzzle kit off and take the treat. Yay. Good boy. Take your nose out now. So I haven't shoved the, the the muzzle on. Right? Can you get off my lap? But I've made the treat quite small and I'm going to put it just here. Yay, good boy. So he hasn't really got to put it on. If needed, I could hold it kind of between two fingers as far in as I could possibly get. I could probably peel that open a little bit more if needed so that he could literally just take the treat without needing to put his nose in. My God, you lot. Without putting his nose in. When he's happily doing that frequently, Right, Pepper, stop it. Getting mugged. Then we have the treat more and more our side. So instead of having it as far in as possible, we'll just bring it a tiny bit more. My, well, you'll do this in a minute, my way. Right, Pepper. <laughs> right, Madden, hang on. Good boy. You got it? Did you get it? Take it out. There you go. There's only one. Oh, my goodness me. So gradually, he wants to put his nose in more and more. Okay, now if I'm using the basket type muzzle, similar thing. Pepper, don't do it, please. I'm going to hold the treat somewhere that I think he can take it. I'm not sure where he'll be able to take that actually from here. Maybe the side there. I'll try that. <laughs> Good boy. Now I know some people put peanut butter in the bay in the back. I could just put the treat in like that 
and just kind of pepper and just kind of smush it about like so. So it's now inside the muzzle. You can you see there? Oh, am I still? Oh, yeah, you should be able to see that. Right. I should have changed the screen, shouldn't I? I just realised. Stop share. <laughs> told you. I told you I'm not used to doing this. You'd have been looking at that from the tiny window, haven't you? So you can put the treat inside and let your dog take it if you want to. I know. So let me show you this with... Oh, let me let Ripley do one. Hide your face. Good girl, Ripley. So, oh, you're right, Pep. Let's do one with Peppa. Oh, she chokes to death. So, again, Peppa's never done this. So I'm going to put the treat like this as far inside as I can get it. Hey, Peppa. Yay, clever girl. Oh, that's nice. Good girl. Clever. Peppa, face. Yeah, and I'm continuing the face cue. So for far, all intents and purposes, this is still the same thing as when we had the cone. And each time, yay, she can take her nose out as soon as she wants, and I'm going to have the treat more and more towards me. So I'm going to have it right here this time. She's doing quite well with this. Yay, good girl. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> and then gradually build it up. And again, this might be all I do in a session, and then I'll move it on on the next one. Hang on, please. So I'm going to have it completely my side. This I haven't asked for it yet. Hang on. Pepper, <laughs> the thing's closed. Right, so you can see her nose is in there. I'm going to give her the, the same dog. I'll give her the treat when she's finished faffing. Right, stop it. And let's just, just stop this. The whole thing keeps closing. Please stop. Right, Pepper. So there it is. So she takes it there. And then she can take her nose out. Yay! When she's ready. Good girl. Mwah. So we'd stop there. That's where we'd finish that session, for example. Right, everyone just calm down. So I'd then build it up slowly, whatever muzzle I'm using. I might use this for the majority, and then I can move across to this. That is absolutely fine. At any point, I can go back to just using the cone, just as a nice little reminder. And we're going to gradually build it up. So we would then get to a point where every time you present to get more treats a muzzle to your dog they just stick your head in basically because they know they get something for it and when that's happening that's when we can then keep it there for just a little bit longer now if you ever taught a chin target to your dog this becomes very useful because they're used to them putting their chin on your hand and that becomes another positive another thing that they're used to doing and they get something fun for it so that's another thing that you can also um work on with your dogs so you've got their nose going in, they're getting the treat each time, more and more and more. And then we start asking them to, oh, good, hold on. And then we give them the treat. And then we maybe see if we can give them a second treat. So they take their nose out, they put their nose back in. Gradually, they'll put it in there for a little bit longer. They'll be happier to put it back in on their own accord. At this stage, you don't want to be closing it. It's quite a loud noise when it's right next to your dog's ear and it can put them off. You're just worried about them putting it on their faces at the minute, okay? Separate to that, you could also, so if you watch Merlin's uh, ears here, yep, yeah, he's absolutely fine. He's heard this so many times. He's nearly 12. He'll be 12 in December. Um, he's heard this a lot. Um, however, if he was new to that, his ears would be going all over the place. So you could also just get them used to this in the middle of doing a bit of play with you. If you're if they're squeaking a toy, you could be closing it and opening it a few times just to get them used to the sound of it. Um and then we would build up the stages basically. So another then another stage would be that your dog puts their head in, and while it's in, we just hold this behind your dog's ears for a split second, let it go, treat, let them come out. They put their nose in, we treat. That's good. Hold on, treat. They come out. Yep. So you could build up like that. Then your next stage is going to literally be they put their nose in. Yes, that's good. Close it quietly treat it's a good dog let them take their head out and we do that and we gradually build up the time that we do that and you're going to then get to the point where your dog actually is doing really 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 well with it and so we want to put this on before they have treats do some training have a meal depends on what you're doing with them um, before they run around if there's someone that's going to visit that late your dog loves to have a cuddle with you could put it on then but that basically the muzzle then goes on before they do something that they love so they get this really positive association with it okay so let me just get you get you <laughs> get you a treat uh get them a treat 
Right, can we not mess about, please, gang? I know you like messing about, but if you don't, right, let me go up. Yes, good boy. So, to give you an idea here. Oh, I'm on oil and kale. So, let's just put it down up now. Right. Happy face? Face? Yes, good boy. Good boy. So, then I'm going to ask him to face. Hold it shut. Out he comes. Good boy. Nice. Melon. Face. Good boy. And then gradually we just build it up more and more like so. Hang on, baby. Right. Good face. I've got it here. Face. Melon. Melon. It's there. Face. Yes. Good boy. Ideally, you want to put the treat in the bottom of the muzzle, but I'm doing it quickly because I can see what the time is and because I've got so many dogs trying to nick a treat. Hold on, Merlin. Right, hang on. Hide your face. Mm. Merlin, face. Hide your face. Wait. Treat with it on. And off we come. Yeah, he's a good boy. Okay, so building up those stages. Now, I'm going to introduce this one to Ripley. They haven't, as you saw, the tag's just come off of it. They haven't actually seen this before. Oh. Um, so just to change it a bit for the rip chop. Right, Merlin, I need you out of the way now because your nose is in the way. Good boy. Right, for Ripley? Yes. No, so, I'm deeming this a little bit too small to be able to use the holes properly. So hide your face. Yes. Oh, <laughs> good girl. So I'm going back into hide face and rewarding afterwards. So I need to give her a cue that she's done it right before I remove the muzzle. So I'm saying yes, which should be the same as a click. Hide your face. Yes, good girl, Ripley Chips. And gradually building it up again. Okay, right, Melly, out of the way. Ripley, wait, wait, hide face. Yes, good girl, you're such a clever girl, aren't you? What a clever bunch. And then the same would happen for... Pepper. Now, I wouldn't ordinarily do all of this in one go with a dog. I would have hours, if not days, in between. Pep, Pepper, hey, hide your face. Oh, good girl, can you? Hang on, hang on. Face, yes, good girl, yeah. So, bearing in mind we've, we've missed quite a few stages here and we suddenly jumped onto the muzzle itself. Face, no. Nope. Face, yes, good girl. So it's a game to her. She doesn't think anything of it. It's not scary. Yes, good girl. It's just something that's fun. You good girl, aren't you? There you go. Didn't have the treat ready because I wasn't expecting you to do it quite so quick, was I? Face, yes. Good girl. Nice. And again, when she's then offering that and maybe I can hold it and ask her to do it twice for a treat, then I'll start closing it. Then I'll start actually clipping it on and getting her to have cuddles and chase me about. And then I can try and squeeze a treat around the edge and then give it to her that way. And gradually build it up like that. And then basically you put it on, take your dog for a little walk uh, and then treat them up with it on and then take it off at the end of the walk. Or even take it off partway through the walk. So you could put it on for a few minutes, take it off for a few minutes and just mix and match a little bit. So they're getting used to the feel of it while they are busy doing other things. Yep. Um, and then build it up from there. Now I'm going to just go back to sharing my <laughs> sharing my dog at the minute. Hello, sharing my screen again. <laughs> Thanks, that was nice. I was hoping you were going to muzzle, uh, muzzle, burp. So how to get the correct size muzzle? Now I've already said I think this is a little bit too small, and I know for a fact this one's too big. In fact, there you go. Look, one can fit inside the other. So how to get the correct size muzzle? There are loads of different muzzle companies out there and um, there are some that i favor more than others there's a really really good one still quite new in the last couple of years called the muzzle movement they are super helpful they make all their muzzles they are all made completely to order yes you pay for that service but the muzzle fits your dog's face perfectly okay and you can choose the colors and blah 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 um so measure the length of your dog's nose so you want to measure from the end to here, oh, that's not very good, to this part here, basically, where the stop is. Merlin, come here. So that bit, yeah, that bit there. You don't want to be measuring higher up because the muzzle's not coming to there. 
and you ideally want to measure sort of kind of right to the very edge of the nose um, that part there you want to measure the width of your dog's actual face so you don't just measure the nose bit here you want to measure hey that's your width the cheek to cheek because the muzzle doesn't just go on the nose it goes over the whole face oh good girl yep so you need to measure cheek to cheek um and even if you're not getting one that's made to measure you can still check it's there you can still check the measurements um with with wherever you're buying it from basically but just, just, just stop it um pepper stop it right have a treat leave me alone you're all being silly um when you are measuring ensure the tape measure is is tight so what i mean by that is if you're measuring cheek to cheek here thank you man that's super helpful if you're measuring cheek to cheek don't wrap it around your dog's nose <laughs> so if you're trying to measure this width don't then wrap it like that because it's going to be the wrong size okay um, ensure that when your measurements are done, your muzzle will fit securely. Don't kind of add on centimetres here, there and everywhere um, because you want it to be a little bit loose because you need it to fit. If it's going to stop your dog eating things or biting things, it must fit. OK, um, allow for pant room. So that means making sure that this part at the bottom is big enough. It might look like it's really big, but once it's actually on your dog, can they open their mouth once it's over them, that, their mouth? Can they open it in order to pant? If not, you want the next size up or a different style if the next size up is too big. Um, can you push a treat through? So I've now realised that this cheap one that I brought, purely, purely for this, hasn't really got a space where I want the treat to go exactly. So I now know, know to look for one that's got a better treat area. I don't know what we're doing, Pepper. Um, there you go um can your dog drink with it on so i know already what she mine probably can because this is too big but i do know that if they push this into the water bowl or my little water fountain that they would be able to sip water with it um and yeah try different muzzles you, you know you can go into pet shops they've normally got at least a baskerville sometimes they've got the soft muzzles and they might have another couple of types in there as well if you can get them online you might be able to order a couple and send one back Ask about, does your trainer um, or do you know someone else with a dog that they have got a muzzle? You can ask if you can try the, the fit and just have a look at it. Um, even if they've not got the same type of dog as you, you can ask to have a little go with your dog because they've got a boxer and you've got a little Welsh terrier and you want to see what shape you need by comparison. Yeah. So, you know, get the correct size muzzle because it's going to be with your dog for, you know, a long time, technically speaking um and um once it fits properly and they can still take food drink and pant they will be more comfortable with it they are more likely to accept it if however you just go no 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 put the muzzle on done your dog is going to spend most of their walk doing this trying to get the muzzle off oh, i've done it again look stop the share right. um they're going to be doing this the whole time trying to get the muzzle off which means that it's not a very fun walk. They will push themselves across the floor with it. They will push it onto your leg and everyone else's leg trying to get it off. And at some point, there is a chance that they will go like that and push it off and it's now hanging around their neck. And once they know they can do it, they'll keep doing it, okay? So you want it to be a pleasant experience, hence the training first, because that way they are not going to be as likely to try and get the thing off because they they see no reason to, because it was fun to start with. Oh, that's very nice. Um, but also if it's a correctly fitting one, it's less likely to come off. I've seen muzzles on dogs that have been riding up into the eyes that are too small. And you can actually see that the whole face is, is really you know squooshed into it. I've seen them that are too where they're too big and literally as the dog walks along, it's kind of falling off and you only just want to put it back on again. Sorry, darling. Um, make sure it fits. Yeah. Especially if it's to stop your dog eating something they shouldn't, or because you have a dog that has a bite history or you don't know their history, make sure it fits. Okay. So I hope <laughs> that this has been useful, that it has helped some people. Um, we didn't have any questions that I saw. I will double, actually I'll double check now while we're talking. I've just swallowed a hair. Um, do, 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 right, that's not what I'm after. Emails. Um, so if I have got any questions, obviously I can add them in. Now, people that, that know me, you all know that you can ask me question time anyway. 
if you don't know me, then know that you can ask me questions. Um, you can email um, joe at dogtrainingessex-suffolk.co.uk. Um, you can, no, nope, we're all good. No new questions. You can um, WhatsApp message um, at 07809 117 912 or you can find us on Facebook under Dog Training for Essex and Suffolk and we are also on Instagram under Cass Untay which is C-A-S-S-N-T-A-Y and you can ask us questions we are always happy and if you need a video to show something specific then we're quite happy to do another video for you. Um, I hope this has been of interest for you um please do share it let other people know about it um find out more i will do more videos about this kind of topic um and also to help people that are worried about the breed specific legislation and what it might mean even if you don't have certain breeds um it goes on type so if your dog if a neighbor or someone says i think that might be uh, the people that come to the door are doing their job. They probably, some of them won't have even had a dog in their life ever. They are the people that are going to come and take the measurements. And if the measurements are right, yeah, that's all you need. So I will do more webinars to help people with concerns. Um, but yeah, I would love feedback. Please do let me know what you thought. I say it's the first time I've actually done it as a presentation. Normally it's just me talking merrily and I've got sort of notes around the place. Um, but I've actually done a presentation beforehand this time. So um, I would love some feedback if you have any. Um, I don't mind. Constructive criticism is good because we learn from that. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're doing this, please do show us what your dog's up to, what you've used. If it wasn't a cone, uh, what sort of muzzle are you going for? Have you got one, but you're going to change it? Um, let us know. Um, and I'll be sharing this about in lots of different places. Um, but like I say, do feel free to share it to other friends and people that you know with dogs as well. And if we can be of help, then please do contact us and let us know. Thank you so much for joining us. I've been Joe Nutkins from Dog Training for Essex and Suffolk. And thank you so much for joining us for this webinar. Good night.